Welcome to this new episode of The Context. Today I want to talk to you about island ecosystems, biologically, culturally, and from a regulatory point of view. The reason is because I am in Malta. Malta is a tiny island in the Mediterranean, south of Italy, very close to the coast of Africa. And it has a fascinating history. It's a beautiful nation, now part of the European Union. If you have never visited, you really must come. The reason I'm here is because uh, I'm a speaker at the Malta AI and Blockchain Summit, where we discuss how startups can execute their projects in the environment of Malta. It was fascinating to see, it is the third time that I participate in this conference, how this island nation has gone through a process of debating, designing, adopting and implementing legislation around technology topics like blockchain and more recently artificial intelligence. And then they are not stopping because they want to put in place regulations and legislation for quantum technologies, space and more, really gearing themselves up to be ready for the challenges of the 21st century from, of course, their point of view. With 500,000 people, they have to be really providing value for the world to care. It is so easy to ignore what uh, 500 people could be doing. And they have to be also very careful in balancing what the more adventurous among them would want to do and uh, what the more conservative want to make sure that happens. They have been able to complete this delicate balancing act for the past thousand years. Imagine, Malta has never been conquered by the uh, uh, Arabs, by the Turks, by uh, all kinds of nations uh, attacking it left and right. Its fortifications and its resilience have been built for the ages. And even though I don't have a deep enough experience, I think I understand how this also reflects in the attitudes of the people who live here. Their attitude necessarily is of a relative caution initially. But when you conquer their trust, when you gain their trust, you are extremely welcome and you are immediately part of an intimate circle where things happen quite rapidly exactly because there is a very dense uh, set of links between the various nodes of a network of activities. And if you betray the trust that you gained, you are also very rapidly expelled from this network. This is, I believe, the consequence of a deep history of understanding how to survive among giant empires and uh, wars of all kinds that uh, have trampled so many uh, before. Now, of course, the 21st century has completely different challenges. The world is more open, more interconnected. Isolation is not possible anymore. And the differential competitive advantages are rapidly eroded uh, if you don't keep up. As an example, uh, the Maltese blockchain legislation is very uh, welcoming to startups, but it is missing a crucial piece. There are no local banks that have stepped up to the challenge of being able to offer 
the easy and convenient opening of accounts for crypto projects or blockchain projects. They are as hostile as banks in other larger countries that can afford it. So this immediately uh, puts the Maltese blockchain initiative in a little bit of a bind because the projects are legally registered here, but then have to find a bank for opening their account uh, somewhere else. Similarly, uh, some of the procedures uh, for incorporating a company in Malta are still uh, completely paper-based. Uh, not even a digital signature uh, is sufficient, let alone uh, maybe uh, recording a, a company act on the blockchain. No, you have to sign on paper and then courier the physical paper uh, to your legal representative uh, who will physically deliver it uh, to the uh, office uh, that registered the, the, the company. So uh, obviously not everything is, is perfect, but the enthusiasm and the desire to, to make it are clear. Uh, they know they cannot afford to uh, relax and to uh, lay down. Uh, and uh, they are clearly succeeding uh, economically and I hope uh, socially as well. Uh, GDP has been growing uh, for the past 10 years uh, and maybe more. Employment is extremely low. Uh, there is... Uh, um, wanted ads uh, in the retail establishments everywhere. Uh, a lot of uh, people actually from Sicily, where unemployment is very, very high, come uh, to Malta to, to work. And thanks to the uh, open and inclusive um, policies of the European Union, they can freely do, uh, do so. So uh, this is, I, I believe, uh, very interesting and captivating, and it can and hopefully will inspire uh, other um, nations and uh, regions to emulate uh, the, the speed and the impactfulness uh, of uh, what uh, Malta is doing. Now, when Charles Darwin uh, went on his famous voyage of uh, the Beagle, was the name of his ship, as a young scientist. And uh, for many, many months, uh, uh, a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken, traveled around uh, the island of Galapagos was one of the most important stops of that exploration and uh, other islands where he observed how local species of birds differed uh, in the design of their beaks that were better adapted to the seeds that could be found on an island versus another. And the description of those differences and those adaptations was part of the basis uh, that then went on and became the publication of On the Origin of Species. The publication that uh, Darwin used to make his uh, theory of evolution known. And islands are very important locations for experiments because they are um, containing the risk of running an experiment and then when the experiment is unsuccessful it won't contaminate it won't taint other environments but when the experiment is successful uh, it can conquer the entire island pretty fast and other environments can copy the experiment that was successful, having avoided the downside risk already. Now, in our world, where the copying mechanism is memetic rather than genetic, so ideas and the implementations of ideas are passing from 
one person to another, from one project to another, from one nation to another, rather than having to wait generation after generation for the genetic information being transmitted via biological inheritance, of course, this copying and spreading of successful experiments is even faster. The opportunity is for a network of island nations to actually co-mingle, associate, reinforce each other. And I am not surprised that here in Malta at this conference, there are representatives of many island nations or micronations that if they are not islands are still enjoying the benefit of being able to do experiments in this way. So I met people from the Bahamas. I met people from Andorra. I met people from many places from Singapore that um, share this characteristic of resilience, of experimentation, of a favorable regulatory environment to embrace innovation. Think about it. It is a kind of isolated experiment that China decided to start in Singapore and Shenzhen that was the basis in many ways of the incredible economic transformation and the creation of middle class now comprising hundreds of millions of individuals that only started 30 years ago or so. And that kind of success is now being emulated everywhere. The entire concept of uh, free economic zones uh, and special economic zones and startup societies is being uh, identified and picked up by people who are responsible for the policies that must incentivize the creation of new realities that can be hopefully as uplifting and empowering as those created in China, uh, in Shanghai, has, have been. And there are now um, specific foundations and funds that are studying the uh, special economic zones and that are investing in um, development of these zones all around the world. So larger nations, watch out, because your situation, even though understandably more complex and not at all easy to transform, is unstable. You have to keep your eyes open in order to be inspired and adopt what is happening in the smaller and nimbler environments that are brewing the uh, cultural, mimetic and technological and social variation from which the solutions are emerging. I feel very happy and privileged to be able to witness directly uh, what is happening uh, here in Malta. And if you are in Europe, anywhere, you know, you can take a low cost uh, flight and for maybe something like 50 euro, or if you are too slow booking your ticket 100 euro, come here, uh, take out uh, an apartment for a weekend and see with your own eyes uh, what, what is going on. I, I really recommend it. And the climate is uh, so nice that you can do it in winter time, uh, or you can do it in the spring. Um, and um, depending on uh, uh, your uh, ability to uh, withstand cold water, well, I swam in November uh, in the in the sea. It is uh, so good, but uh, in the summer it is magnificent, and the food is great too. Their specialty is rabbit or octopus. Both of uh, those foods are, uh, of course, incompatible with a future where we are all uh, becoming uh, vegetarian. 
but uh, as far as our present is concerned, uh, until uh, um, many of us, including me, are omnivores, uh, those are excellent uh, dishes worth uh, trying. So thank you for listening to uh, this uh, episode of uh, The Context. As usual, I am waiting for your questions, for your uh, input of uh, how to make these uh, even more um, stimulating. My objective is always that of uh, giving you a broader view, interpreting what is going on in the world. Uh, the knowledge that uh, we gain from putting together various sources of information must be part of an understanding that enables us to look confidently to the future. And uh, if you believe that uh, I am delivering this uh, value to you, feel free uh, to support the context uh, on Patreon so that my team can keep producing and hopefully even improving the production value of these episodes uh, to you and to everybody who is uh, watching them on the various channels. Thank you.